The Endangered Species Act was a major turning point in the history of American conservation, creating response to the rapid elimination of American wildlife. To protect the species of fish, wildlife, and plants that are of aesthetic, ecological, educational, historical, recreational, and scientific value to the nation and its people, Congress passed this important act in 1973. This gave the government power to protect species that are endangered of disappearing forever. This act protects the future of America's beauty, but also other, more important aspects. Please listen to this brief history of animal diversity in America and why the Endangered Species Act is so important. When the first European colonists entered the American wilderness years ago, their eyes met with millions of acres of forest, with pristine lakes, rivers, and with streams full of fish. These men and women saw these resources as commodities that would supply them with easy money. Without the Endangered Species Act or any sort of restriction, they began to harvest these resources, sending them out to their parent countries, France, England, and Spain. The American beaver was one of the first things to disappear due to unrestrained hunting. Its pelts were very popular for hats, and the colonists killed and sold large numbers of these animals. It was not long before the beavers in that part of America had all but disappeared. Expansion of America led to similar problems. American bison was another species to quickly disappear. People hunted these animals relentlessly, and even today they are all but extinct. These stories were repeated with salmon, steelhead, and many other useful animals that America saw as unlimited and free for taking. They didn't see and didn't care about how fast they ate up their resources or how much they used. These practices continued until the late 19th century and early 20th century when national parks were established by Theodore Roosevelt and others who had awakened to the fact that America's resources were not unlimited. They established hundreds of parks and refuges where hunting and fishing was regulated or prohibited. Through their efforts, much of American wilderness was preserved for future generations. But national parks are not enough to protect most endangered species. Things like the pesticide DDT all but wiped out many types of raptors and shorebirds, despite the existence of protected areas. It took several decades before the United States government began to realize the fact that more support was needed. Endangered species are important because of their overall value in the ecosystem in science, in beauty, and even in medicine. Extinctions of certain animals and plants can trigger chain reactions that bring down other species as well. If we allow these things to happen, not only will our rare and exotic beauties decline, but we will also experience many negative side effects to agriculture and the U.S. economy. We will lose many plants that may contribute to future medicines and remedies to currently incurable diseases such as cancer. To combat the loss of these animals, government established the Endangered Species Preservation Act in 1966 to help protect endangered species. When this failed to work, they established the Endangered Species Conservation Act in 1969, and finally, the Endangered Species Act in 1973. It also helped government take notice of endangered species, and species threatened of endangerment elsewhere in the world so that species in other countries could be protected through treaties and other agreements. The key features of the plan are a listing system where species are determined to be threatened or more significantly endangered based on scientific data, protection against harming, harassing, or capturing any endangered species. This also prohibits commercial development from making harmful modifications to the species habitat, recovery planning to help restore an endangered or threatened species. Immediately, several species began to recover. Both the peregrine falcon and bald eagle species severely diminished by the use of DDT, began to recover through many conservation efforts and also the protection of the Endangered Species Act. The grizzly bear doubled its population in Yellowstone National Park alone. Among the significantly recovered endangered species are the black-footed ferret, the gray whale, the sea otter, and the gray wolf. The Endangered Species Act, as the nation's strongest environmental protection law, has contributed to the steady recovery of at least a hundred species. Many consider the Endangered Species Act a great success for the wildlife of America. But there are many who are in opposition to this act as well. 
Although the act was supported almost unanimously by Congress when it was signed into law, there were and still are many businesses that argue that the act is too restricting of commercial development. When the spotted owl was put on the endangered species list in 1990, it triggered a shutdown on the logging of millions of acres of forested land. It also cost tens of thousands of jobs, and it is expected that the recovery from the shutdown will cost up to $20 billion. That is a lot of money to spend on one little species of owl. On the other side of things, there are those who think that the Endangered Species Act should be strengthened greatly. They claim that the Endangered Species Act only has a 1% success rate. It is true that only 20 of the 1500 species have been declared recovered. They point out that many species go extinct while being considered for listing, and some have even gone extinct while protected on the Endangered Species Act. They think that if we are to fulfill the purpose of the Endangered Species Act, which is once again to protect the species of fish, wildlife, and plants that are of aesthetic, ecological, educational, historical, recreational, and scientific value to the nation and its people, the Endangered Species Act needs greater control and priority. The controversies of the Endangered Species Act are far from over. In conclusion, the Endangered Species Act, created to preserve America's endangered and threatened species, was established in 1973. Its efforts have turned the tide of many declining species so that their values of medicinal, scientific, agricultural, and economic importance do not disappear. Although many people think that the act need be abolished, and others think it should be improved and strengthened, it has played a very powerful and important role in turning the tides of over-exploited species.